Right you lot, I'm not going to waste too much time on the intro, you've read the title, I'm going to be trying to predict the next three fights of some big UFC names, let's get straight into it with the first one I'm going to cover, that's Sean O'Malley. Now we're going to start with the obvious, of course we know he's already fighting Marlon Vera and I think he will win that one by knockout as well, although I do think that Vera does have an underrated chin, so it may go long, but I think in order for Vera to hurt O'Malley he has to get in close, and I believe he'll get caught, I'm not going to lie. After that, I think the obvious choice for his next opponent is going to be Marab. And again, I think he'll beat him by a knockout. And again, it's a similar thing. The only way that Marab can do anything to Sean is if he gets close. And the way he's always kind of looking for takedowns and not landing them, he can leave himself in no man's land. And if he does, he's getting chinned. And the final fight in this entry, I think he'll end up taking Corey Sanhagen on and losing his title. The main reason for that is I think Sanhagen is long enough and comfortable enough on the feet to be able to live with Sean, and he's a better grappler. Over five rounds, I think he'll beat him. Right, next up, it's our boy Tom Aspinall. Now, this first fight, I don't like it at all. I don't like the man I'm going to put him against. But looking at the division, you've got Jones injured. I don't think is going to touch him. It's going to have to be Cyril Garn again for the interim title. It's fine, though. He finishes him early. Completely. No debate. After that, things get a little bit tricky because the obvious thing is unification with John Jones, right? And that is what I'm going to do, by the way. But I believe there's an ego to John Jones that when everyone is calling Aspinall the best heavyweight in the world, that's the only th way I could see him taking that fight. And if he does, Aspinall's going to wipe him out. The reason is, Jones is very good at managing distance. He's very good at kind of arm play and sort of hand uh, manipulation, that kind of stuff. But Aspinall just barred straight through that. I think he knocks him out early. And the last one, the third fight, which you're looking probably about a year, maybe just over into the future at this point. I've decided I'm going to go with Jelton Almeida for that opponent, and he knocks him out as well. I was thinking maybe doing like a Pavlovich rematch after he beats like a Volkov or something, but if Garn actually fights against Aspinall and loses badly, he'll have no leg to stand on in terms of turning down lower ranked opposition. If Almeida can smoke Garn, I think he'll earn a title shot. But like I said, I think Aspinall will win. I think Aspinall beats everybody in the division. Next up, moving on to the new light heavyweight champion, Alex Pelela. Now, it's pretty obvious that he's going to fight Jamal Hill and I think he's going to chin him. The reason is, as much as I can appreciate Hill's power, if you watch his striking, it's a bit goofy and I think Alex will find the shot at some point. I'm pretty sure his next fight after Hill would then be the winner of the rescheduled Anka Live against Walker and I think Anka Live will beat Walker and then I think he's going to submit Alex as well. One of the great things about Anka Live is as much as he's obviously from that kind of area of the world if you get my, what I'm saying here that love their wrestling he's always looked so comfortable on the feet. Like with Makachev it's grown over time but Anka Live has always looked good on the feet. And with that being said I think he's intelligent enough with his striking defence to be able to keep himself safe for long enough to then take Alex down. I don't think it'll be a first round sub necessarily, but I do think that by sort of the end of the third, he'll find something. But I will have to say that Alex's uh, submission defense against Yiri was good, but Anka Live's a different level to Yiri. So that leaves us with one more entry for Alex. Now, all I'm going to say is I think Adesanya is going to come back to daddy, uh, to quote the man himself. So I think he'll fight Adesanya. I'll explain how. By that point, neither of them will be getting any younger. Right now, they're one-on-one -on -one in MMA. I think Adesanya, with his time off, if he sees Alex lose the belt at 205, I could definitely see him taking a fight with Alex in like a five-round pay-per-view co-main, maybe. Knowing full well, of course, if he beats Alex, he's getting another shot at the light heavyweight title. But I think Alex would stiff him completely out cold. It may not even be a left hook. I could actually see, I'm not going to lie, after watching those first two fights, Adesanya loves a pull counter. He's always looking to kind of lean his head back and then come straight through. I think Alex could catch him with a head kick. I know it's not something he throws that often, but he's definitely smart enough to see it and then execute it. So who knows? I've just spoke about Adesanya and Alex Pereira. Let's talk about Sean Strickland. I'm going to rip the bandage off here. He's losing in Canada. I'm sorry. He is. I love him. He's losing. Sean's a cage bully and what I mean by that is he likes leaning in the dance and getting in your face and roughing you up. If there's anybody that almost like, tries that on him, he's not as successful like with Jarrah Cannon here. I think that Drickus will be able to take his shots, walk into his range, eventually get a takedown maybe sort of halfway through the third I'll say and then submit him. After that I think he'll fight Paolo Costa. 
I believe that Costa is big enough of a name to entice Strickland. And I'm not going to lie, he is coming off a win. He is in the top six. He just lost the title fight. It kind of works. Fight night main event, five rounds. I think Sean will eventually get to him and gas him and win a decision. We'll say maybe 49-46-ish. Then I think you just rematch him with Jarrah Cannonier, who I think in the meantime will be maybe a Roman Delidze, maybe a winner of like a Paul Craig, Brendan Allen. And then you rematch these two for a title shot. But this time I think Strickland would win. I think he won the first fight though, I'm not going to lie. I thought I might as well do Pimblet in this. Let's just let's just move on. He'll beat Tony over three rounds, whatever. Let's talk about his next fight. And in my opinion, he'll fight Hanato Moicano. I know there's been a lot of uh, speculation about him and Jalen Turner. I think this was more likely to happen. I think he'll get TKO by Hanato. I don't think that Moicano will try and take him down that much. I just think he'll try and swang and bang with him. And I think he's a much better striker and got a much better chin than Pimble. Actually, no, that's a bit of a lie. Paddy has got a good chin. I will give him that. But he can't keep getting hit like he does. I'm not going to lie. And after that, in my opinion, it makes all the sense in the world. A rematch with Jared Gordon. Again, on a pay-per-view main card, he's still going to be a big draw even after one loss. And I think he will actually win a rematch. I think he'll sub him. Right, gents. Next up, Leon Edwards. He's number six in this video. I've got eight in total. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. Of course, like we've already said with other fighters, his next fight we already know. It's Colby Covington, and I think he wins a decision. The main reason for that is his low kicks, which are relatively underrated in his game. And also... With the fact that Colby has to come forwards, a lot of his weight is going to be on that lead leg. If he can time the low kicks well and land them often, Colby's rhythm will be completely thrown off. Although what I will say to counter what I've just said is, Leon dealt well with Usman's wrestling style, which is very much about power and explosiveness. Whereas Colby is a lot more about chain wrestling and weaponizing cardio. It'll be interesting to see him deal with that. After that, he can finally shut this big old wet lettuce up. He TKO's Bilal Mohammed. I mean, imagine if Bilal gets the... I don't even want to. It's making me feel a bit unwell. But either way, Leon, in their rematch, of course, they've already fought. But this time around, it ain't going to be no eye poke. It'll be a head kick and then ground and pound TKO finish. I bloody hope so, at least. It just... That man just really gets on my tits, I'm not going to lie. But all good things must come to an end. And I think Leon's reign as champion will at the hands of Shavkat Rachmanov. He's just incredibly well-rounded, and the reason why I've put him down as a submission victory is I could honestly see like a standing guillotine. He's crafty like that, Shavkat, man. He's, he's insane. And also, Sanko fancies him, so fair play to him, I'm not going to lie. Next up, Charles de Blanc. So I had to cover him. Unfortunately, he's losing his rematch against Islam. The problem he's always going to have with Islam is natural strikers will never follow him onto the ground, like a Poirier, like a Gaethje, whereas Islam will. He'll always jump in his guard if he hurts him, so he doesn't have that to fall back on. Last time he got subbed, this time he's getting TKO'd. Next logical fight after that, in my opinion, is probably going to end up being Gamrot. It's a similar thing to what he did after he lost the first time against Islam. A little bit of a drop down the rankings. I think he'll have a similar outcome as well. A, re a relatively early KO win for Charles Oliveira. Right, this last one is going to take a little bit of explaining. So just kind of bear with me a little bit, alright? Volkanovski is going to beat Ilya and then at that point he will have nothing left at all to do at featherweight unless he fancies beating up Max Holloway again which honestly I don't think interests him it definitely doesn't interest me or any other fans that I know so I say that he takes the time away and properly becomes a lightweight and just has a look at what he can do in the division I think I said a similar thing about Holloway recently in a different video I think Volk could arguably do the same I'm not gonna lie that being said if he fights Oliveira he's, he's getting subbed but I could honestly see it happening in like a five round pay-per-view co-main maybe this time next year, somewhere along those lines. As much as I do think that Oliveira would win it, I think that Volk would have his opportunities. It would be a fantastic fight, especially if Volk actually took the time to move up and 100% be a lightweight. It would be fascinating. I'd love to see it. I'm sure you guys would love to see it as well, but hey, it's just a thought, you know. Well, I need a reason to put him in the thumbnail, so I might as well do three for Connor as well. Although I will say there is a relatively big chance he may not even have three more fights. However, if he does, this is how I think it'd go. He chins Chandler in one. Mike's just, he's just way, way, way too open. All he does is just swing hooks. If he was a little bit more calculated on the feet, he probably would beat Connor quite easily. And he still could win. I think Connor would finish him round one though. Straight left hand down a pipe. Next up, I was torn here, I'm not going to lie. It was either between Gaethje for the BMF title or a fourth fight with Poirier. I've given the payday to Justin and I think he'll knock him out relatively early. I know that Gaethje has spoke a lot about the lightweight title and if you beat Poirier and Fazeev in a year, maybe you've earned it, but I think he'll take the payday and I think he'd chin Connor clean. Head kick, 
right hand, left hook, whatever he wants, uppercut, he'll finish him. Okay, so he gets flatlined by Gaethje. He's out for almost a year again, and he says, right, I've got one more fight in me. Who could he possibly fight? Hmm. Nate Diaz? Why not complete the trilogy? I mean, Dana, just hand him a one-fight deal, say, I have X amount of million, I'm going to make way more millions than you are, mate. So just do it, man, come on. You could do it in Vegas, you could do it MSG, um, you could set out a stadium in Dublin, I mean, even in Dana's back garden. Wherever it is, we're all going to pay for it, and I think it'll be a great way to end both of their careers. Connor would chin him, though. At that point, Nate will be in his 40s, and his legendary chin is only going to hold up that much. I mean, Jake Paul nearly cracked it, so I think some point midway in the fight, I think he'd find a way to finish Diaz. And that just about wraps up the video for today. As always, lads, I hope you enjoyed. If you have any comments, let me know your thoughts in, in them down below. I think that makes sense. Fuck it, whatever. I'm not going to edit that. Just run with it. I've been talking now for like an hour. Fuck it, whatever. But, yeah, I'm losing my fucking marbles. That was it. All right, I'll see you later.